Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship this morning. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day outside. And, um, I don't really care how much snow we get. I'm just happy that we can gather here to, together in our church and uh, worship God together. Um, if, if I'm going to be 70 this week. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Our uh, annual vestry meeting is going to be online on Tuesday night. Tuesday night at seven o'clock. Uh, there will be a Zoom invitation issued uh, for those who are able to to communicate that way. And uh, so, uh, if, if you don't, I think everybody has a copy of the annual vestry report by now. Uh, if you know of anybody who still needs one, I know Bert has been busy, busy running around. Susie needs one. Uh, anybody that uh, has needed one, Bert's been running around delivering them. So we'll make sure we get a report before we leave today. Okay, let's worship God together as we sing our opening hymn, number one, Holy, 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 uh, verses one and three. <laughs> Isaiah. 
In the year that King Messiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy Lord is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of uncleanness, and I live among a people of uncleanness. Yet my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, for he told me a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth and it said, Now this is now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted up. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And, the, and he said, Go and say to his people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of his people go, and stop their ears, and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate. Until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again. Like a terapist or an oak, whose stump remains standing when it is fell, the holy seed and it's done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 138, found on page 895. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down before your holy temple and praise your name. Because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name. And your word of When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord. When they have heard their words to their mouth, they will sing of the ways of the Lord, that the greatest glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the low. He perceives the high from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make you good his purpose for me. O oh Lord, if your love and your strength, do not abandon the works of your hands. Let us pray. God of creation and home, help us to see and discover your purposes, that we may become willing instruments of your grace, and that all the world may come to love and praise your name. In the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I will remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, in which you stand through, which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I hand it on to you as of first importance. 
sins, for that in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to sift us into this cloth. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. What, whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to me. The word of the Lord. And the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water, and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but we've caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. During the season of Epiphany, we, we see examples of Jesus' uh, identity. Epiphany uh, brings a light to, to who Jesus is and, and what it means uh, that he was born uh, to a virgin at Christmas and, and something about his mission in the world. We, we heard him uh, preach in uh, Nazareth uh, the other day, the last Sunday, maybe the Sunday before, uh, where he kind of reads his own mission statement uh, about being sent to the lost and those who need help and, and strengthening. So we hear three different call stories today. We are all called in our baptism to be followers of Jesus' example 
and, uh, and teachings. And, and all three of these call stories, the one from Isaiah, and the one from Paul, and the one from Peter, they all have some similarities. So I just want to quickly go through some of those. All of them have in common that the people who experience this call to ministry, to prophecy, to, to following Christ, all follow a, a, a feeling of, of distress of some kind. For Isaiah, the distress was uh, uh, the death of King Uzziah. That's the way the passage starts in Isaiah 6, in the death of King Isaiah, of, of, of Uzziah. And, and the, the chaos and the, the grief and, and the dislocation of, of, uh, of the people of, of Israel on the death of their king. Isaiah had been a good king, one of the few good kings that Israel had in those days. His death threw everything into darkness. For Paul, Paul recounts in 1 Corinthians about his call, how formerly he had persecuted the Christian church, murdering people, breaking up their assemblies and, and, and uh, just persecuting the church. And he was in the midst of sin. He was in the midst of anger. He was in the, he was in the midst of, of, of committing great crimes against God. The disciples had been out fishing all night and caught nothing. This was very serious for them because they depended on a good catch to feed their families. So they were feeling up upset. They were feeling upset because things had, had not gone well for them. And then each of the three groups of people experienced the presence of God in some kind of astounding an unusual and holy way. For Isaiah, he had this, this extreme vision of God's presence in the temple. Uh, it was overwhelming. For Paul, he was on the road to Damascus to persecute the church. We read about it in Acts. And a vision of Christ appeared to Paul whose name was Saul before this, appeared to Saul and, and asked Saul, why do you persecute me? And took away Saul's sight, his, his, his actual physical sight, and gave him spiritual sight so that Saul was so changed and so brought to, to be in relationship with Jesus, the risen Christ, that he had to take on a new name. He became Paul and became one of the chief evangelists, apostles, teachers of the early Christian church. The disciples saw this. First of all, they heard Jesus teaching, and maybe they had already heard some of Jesus teaching, but then this miracle, uh, this miraculous catch of fish, where all night before they, they'd been fishing and caught nothing, Jesus told them to go out to the deep sea and put down their nets, and they caught so many fish that they required two boats, and they almost sunk with the weight of the catch. It was a miracle. <coughs> their response in each of the three people, or groups of people, is one of, of guilt and shame, unworthiness in the face of God's majesty, in the face of God's call, in the face of God's bounty. Lord, depart from me, for I am an unclean man, 
says Peter. Isaiah says to God, I'm not worthy to be your prophet because I am a man of unclean lips. In a, in a nation of people with unclean lips. And Paul, Paul groveled in the dirt at the side of the road until, until Jesus sent one of his other disciples to help him. As we think about our own call, it is often in moments of distress. It's often in moments of grief. It's often in moments of, of shame and guilt that we come to understand our relationship with God and the nature of God's love and the nature of the call that he extends to us, the call to be in relationship with God. It is at difficult, critical moments of our lives when we most experience God's love. Let me rephrase that. It is at these critical moments of our lives when we have the opportunity to hear God's call and to be in a healing, comforting, strengthening relationship with God. We have a choice to make. We can turn away from God or we can turn to God. In all three of these stories today, they turned to God. There were moments of weakness, moments of indecision, moments when they did not follow their call, but in the end they were found to be faithful and good examples for us. As we continue through the season of Epiphany and as we approach our annual vestry meeting, let us respond to God's call to us in the midst of our darkness, in the midst of our need, in the midst of our frustration, in the midst of our fear. Let us reach out to God and take his hand. Let us be aware of Christ's presence with us, calling us to walk with him in peace and strength and courage. And let us love one another, for surely that is the greatest call to which we are invited. Amen. Let us continue as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. <coughs> Confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father, God our Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered as Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's continue with the third.
let us use litany number three on page 112. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our plan. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians. Strengthen us in our call. Help us to be attentive to your presence. That we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Todd, our bishop. We pray for Anne, our metropolitan. Linda, our prior. And the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Long. And for all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. Lord, we, hear our prayer. we pray, for Elizabeth, our Queen, who celebrates 70 years on the throne, the leaders of the nations. We pray especially for. for Eastern Europe and for the tensions between Russia and the Ukraine. We pray for the people and leadership in the Ukraine and for those other nations that are trying to intervene. We pray for all in authority that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, Lord, Lord. We pray for Delhi, Audeville, Norwich, Frankfurt. We pray for those who live here, the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, men and women, that you will show your good will to all. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of our society and those who minister to them. We pray for those who have been persecuted and ignored. We pray for those who have experience discrimination. We pray for a, a peaceful end to the demonstrations in Ottawa and Toronto, the next city, and in other places. We pray for all those we know who are sick or in need of in special need. We pray for George and Lisa, Lyle and Rita. For those known in our hearts alone. We pray for the people and clergy of the Diocese of Huron. That you will be their help and defense. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism, for those recently baptized, that they may be strengthened in the faith. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. We give thanks today for Isaiah, for St. Paul, and for Jesus' disciples as they each answered their call. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have heard our prayers. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests that may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Continue on page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we call you in hand. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. To be free one another in the sign of peace. Let's see you. We continue as we offer our gifts before God and prepare to celebrate the Eucharist. Our offertory hymn, Amazing Grace, number 352. We'll sing verses 1 and 2. <coughs> I can't wait until we get to say the same whole things. <laughs> Receive our offering this day and make us one with him who is our peace. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We'll continue with your first prayer number five on page 193. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened the path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, is the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, 
we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick, and ate and drank without past and sinners. He opened up the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And there you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and in the city of heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the life of the world. God, God here among us, us light in the midst of us, bring us to light and light. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
eternal God, in you we find peace beyond all help. May we who share in this heavenly banquet be instruments of your peace on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ alone. Amen. And we pray together. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all of our understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Let us stay together and go now to peace. <coughs> Thank you.